everyone and welcome back to the Adventures in Collecting YouTube channel where today we're back on my desk and we have hands because we are going to be doing some major unboxing. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Ghostbusters Plasma series, but not just one, not just two. So that's right, we're looking at the whole wave plus the Build-A-Figure. We're going to do this whole thing uh, on the camera for, for you guys to, to go over it. So these have been out for a little while. People are starting to find them in their um, in their, their local stores. I, I Myself, uh, I got these ordered from Hasbro Pulse, but I uh, recently did find them in Target. So, um, you know, that they, they are out there. Uh, the wave is, is uh, comprised of... Ray, Peter, Dana, Winston, Egon, and Gozer, and of course the the build a figure uh, in these boxes is the uh, the terror dog or uh, Vin's Clortho to be more uh, specific. So um, let's just go over the packaging a little bit before we dive into these figures individually. So we're gonna use our our Egon package here, um, the late great Harold Ramis. Um, so as you can see, the packaging is designed to look a little bit like their suits. So it has some really, really cool, um, uh, texturing, uh, drawn in to make it look like it's stitched, um, to make it look like a patchwork. It has even a zipper at the top here, which is really neat. Um, of course we have the Ghostbusters logo on the side, as well as the character name there on the bottom. Um, on the side, we have a really cool portrait, uh, of the four, uh, titular Ghostbusters, uh, looking great, uh, some really minimalistic art there, and on the back, we do have the full lineup of the wave, along with the Build-A-Figure, um, notating which pieces come with which figure, uh, really neat touch there, um, and then a bio for, for each figure. Very typical of the kind of Hasbro styling with the way that these are packaged, um, they go, they go right along with uh, with Marvel Legends Black Series. Um, they just get that really great art treatment as well as the nice big window so that way you can see everything inside. Should you choose to keep these uh, mint on card or, um, you know, or, or take them out. Um, again, too, much like uh, other Hasbro figures, they're just held together with a piece of tape. So really by opening it up and taking the figure out, if you wanted to pose it and then put it back in the box later, that is totally possible. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to bust these open and, uh, we'll do a little, a little time lapse. So that way you can see them coming open and then, uh, the, the terror dog coming together and then we'll go through them one by one, uh, and take a look at them individually. So with that, we will be back. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that little time lapse of the unboxing here. But now we have Vince Clortho to put together. So uh, we have a body piece, we have a head piece, and then we have arms and legs. So let's uh, let's put him together real quick here, and then we'll we'll actually start with the build a figure. So let's pop on his head. All right, we got his head on. There we go. And let's see if we can figure out here arms versus legs. I might need to look at the package real quick. All right. Yeah, so these these guys are going to go in the back. All right. Let's see. Nope. That definitely goes in there. Yep. Like that. Like that. Nice little audible pop there. Like that. Okay, we're in, and we are in. What a cool build figure. All right, so Vince Clortho, we have him put together here, and you know what, since we have him in hand, let's just start with him. So, um, now th this is an awesome figure, uh, kind of necessary for, for the, in terms of like the 
scalable bad guys from the first uh, Ghostbusters film. You know, maybe maybe Slimer would be a, another choice here. But um, what's really neat about this build a figure is that the paint on it is incredible. So it goes from this shiny silver, and you can actually see the light reflecting off of it here pretty well. Um, a shiny silver to like a flat matte gray um, on the bottom. The sculpting on it is great. This figure can totally, totally stand up on it on its own. I'm sure um, with the right position, you could probably even just stand it up on its hind legs. Um, I'll play, definitely play with it once we get it into the light box. But you know, just finding the center of gravity on it, I'm I am very confident that you could get this guy to stand up on his hind legs. Um, in fact, I've almost, I've almost got it as I'm just sitting here talking. There we go. Look, look at him. Hey, um, great build a figure. Um, of course there are famously two terror dogs. Um, we do not have a Lewis Tully figure. Uh, we can hope for maybe a future wave. I know these, these, uh, figures have been kind of put on hold as, um, and, you know, as the movie, the new movie has, has been put on hold as well due to the, the pandemic and, and everything. So hopefully uh, when the film comes out, we'll get some more figures from Hasbro and maybe some more um, from the classic films. Um, I know Dave and I would also be totally in for the uh, the, the, the all-female Ghostbusters cast figures as well. Um, we're big fans of that film. So, uh, but this is awesome. You know, has the articulated jaw, looks just like the, the terror dog from the film. Um, you can see in the jaw there, uh, with the articulation, you know, it opening up, there's some great detail in sculpting, uh, and the tongue and the teeth, the eyes, the, the texture of the skin, it looks really leathery and bumpy. Um, overall, great build a figure, really nice size, definitely would not have fit in the package <laughs> on its own. Um, it's big. All right, so let's get on to the next figure. Well, you know what, we'll save the Ghostbusters themselves for last year. We have Gozer. So... Um, Gozer also looking great here. Uh, let's, let's break down just real quick the, the articulation and, um, paint and detail. So articulation, she's got the, the standard Marvel Legends style, um, elbow, single jointed elbows. Um, she's got the, uh, the ball joint at the, the shoulders. She has a, a really deep, um, ab crunch there. You can see she, she bends over pretty, uh, bends forward and backward um, a lot. Very, very, very uh, accentuated there, you know, in terms of, of her ability to bend. She has a swivel at the upper torso, which is, is kind of new. Um, you know, the way that they've done that here is really smooth. It's actually more than a swivel. She's on a little bit of a ball joint, so you, you can actually get her to um, really <laughs> do, it looks like she's doing calisthenics right now. Um, no, no swivel at the lower waist. Uh, her head, she could look down pretty far. Um, she could look up. You'll get that more, a uh, better feel of that once we're in the, um, uh, in the light box. But, uh, legs, she's got the, uh, upper thigh swivel. She's got a double jointed knee, as well as that typical wedged foot for Marvel Legends figures. So, um, you know, she should be pretty, pretty easy to, to stand. Now, her one accessory outside of her uh, Build-A-Figure piece is almost like Emperor Palpatine-style Force Lightning hands that peg right in, and they look fantastic. Um, it's a really great effect. Uh, what's really nice about her fingers in general, she kind of has these, like, monstrous-looking, uh, like, fingers, but with the, the lightning here, um, really great paint job as they go from the color of her... Uh, almost like a gray color t down to the, the translucent um, lightning effect. So really great figure. This is going to look really great posed. Um, yeah, excited to see how the Ghostbusters uh, stack up next to her. So let's move on to Dana. And this is Dana as she appears kind of possessed. Um, she does have Sigourney Weaver there, does have the red eyes. See if we can get it to focus a little bit better on her. We'll definitely get it in the light box, but she does have the red eyes. Um, she and and the full uh, heavy makeup look. Uh, what's interesting about this figure is the way that her dress is sculpted. They don't really give you a whole lot of options here because the dress, the way that it was draped over the one arm, you very easily break up the sculpt by raising that arm. Um, so 
you know, your poses are going to kind of have to leave that arm in position so that the, the, the draping effect there of the dress works. Speaking of the dress, um, what's really nice about it is it is a softer rubber. Um, so it, you know, she, she does have, you know, a little bit of a little bit of movement to her. Um, this figure in this form, you know, not a whole lot of action to her. She kind of just floats and, and, uh, and, and flirts with, with Venkman. So, um, you know, this is really one that's, you know, just to kind of capture the character. I think a much more interesting, uh, Dana Barrett figure would be Dana from, uh, Ghostbusters part two. You know, she has the baby, uh, you know, the, there, there are other, other options. So hopefully we get another Sigourney Weaver sculpt, um, in the future, uh, Unlike the NECA sculpt of her, I, I'm looking at the NECA sculpt of her from Aliens. Uh, this kind of misses the mark a little bit on Hasbro. It's very clear who it's supposed to be. The hairstyle is great. Um, overall, it is a good looking figure, but I don't think they, they really nailed the likeness. Um, in terms of the, uh, the, the articulation, she does have a single jointed elbow. Um, she, she rotates at the wrist. Uh, she can look down. She can look up. She does have a ball joint at the waist, and you know her her legs are the typical double jointed knee, uh, Marvel Legends legs. But due to the dress, she can't really do much in them. This this is definitely a background figure, uh, a very static pose figure, uh, but ne also necessary. Dana is very important to the story, and we love Sigourney Weaver, so happy to have her. No accessories with that figure. Now. Onto the Ghostbusters themselves. So what's really cool is each Ghostbuster gets a unique accessory along with their Proton Pack. Um, the Proton Packs look fantastic. The material that they used for the hose on the uh, the Proton Pack scares me a little bit. Um, you know, this is definitely if it, it feels you know it feels nice, but this is definitely one of those uh, living hinge, um, as 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 they like to say in the the, the toy biz. Um, that over time, I'm worried that, that this is going to fall apart. Um, it just has that kind of soft feeling to it. Um, the way that the proton pack pegs on, and we'll, we'll, we'll put it on Egon here. Um, let's see. So we have a little peg that comes off on the side here. I'm not going to do this with all of them, um, on camera, just to save some time here. We'll just do Egon. Let's see, does it peg off on the other side too? No, it doesn't, just the one side. All right, so bear with me here while I try to get this guy on. Um, looks like we're gonna have to do this arm first, head through the middle, yeah, all right, there we go, not too bad. And then we peg on um, in the back there. There's a, there's a hole in Egon's back. And we lock the strap on there, perfect. That fits excellent. Um, now, Whereas the Dana Barrett uh, sculpt kind of missed the mark with Sigourney Weaver, the opposite is the case here with Harold Ramis and Egon. This figure looks absolutely incredible. The likeness is there. The glasses, thank heavens, are sculpted on, so you don't have to worry about glasses falling off like you did on the previous Mattel figure. Uh, the the sculpt of the clothes, the the suit, the way that his boot, the way that the pants are tucked into the boots. Um, the elbow pads, every little detail, including the, the Spengler, um, sewn on patch there and the, and the, the Ghostbusters logo on the, the, the right shoulder, yeah, the right shoulder. Um, this is, this is fantastic. Uh, they absolutely crushed this figure. It looks so much like Harold Ramis. It's borderline, um, frightening. Uh, he comes with the PKE meter, no motion, no, uh, articulation on the meter. It is, it is a, a static object. Um, it fits in both his hand as well as a hole on his belt. And there's a little peg on the back of it, kind of like uh, Hasbro does with the lightsabers. So moving on, let's take a look at Ray. So Ray, um, I'm moving on to Ray next because our buddy Toishes had a little bit of problems with, with Ray. So I want to see if we have the same problems. Ray's got a little bit of a gut and he had a hard time getting his proton pack on. So we're gonna try that first and foremost here. We're gonna unpeg the, uh, the proton pack and then we'll get into Ray and uh, the likeness and, and his accessories and all that in a moment. Let's see if we can get the proton pack on and strapped up because potentially if they, I don't know, it looks like we're gonna have the same problem. Let's see, I don't wanna, 
Oh no. Oh, oh, hang on. Maybe I spoke too soon. So I'm worried. I don't want to overstretch it because I don't want to break it. But let's see. I'm pegged. I got it pegged there. So Toysha's, it looks like you might have gotten somebody else's uh somebody else's proton pack with your with your ray, because ours is definitely closing. It's definitely making it there. Um that's not to say it's a little snug, but it's definitely making it there. Uh oh no, you know what? I can't get it to stay. Hang on. Let's try this one more time. One more time. There we go. Alright, so it looks like the trick is for Ray's proton pack. Yeah. All right, we're in there. Ray's proton pack, you got to slide the belt below his little belly there. He has a little protruding belly. All right. So, uh, Ray's accessory. Ray's accessory is the goggles. And the goggles fit nicely on his head. Um, you can wear them in kind of that up position like he has in the, the poster. Um, as well as stretching them over his hair and onto his eyes which looks a little funny to me but um they do fit now uh the the accessories are supposed to be relatively uh interchangeable but um i know that these will not fit over harold ramus's hair nor am i going to try to get them because i can already see the stress on the side of the plastic um yeah so these glasses we're gonna be we're gonna be very careful with these goggles now ray they uh, they did get Dan Aykroyd's likeness here. It's not perfect, but it is pretty good. Um, again, same goes for the, the costume. The costume is great. Uh, rinse and repeat in terms of the details, the little hoses, the little uh, doodads on the side. There is some sculpted in, looks like maybe a walkie-talkie of some kind. Um, but yeah, Ray, great figure. Once again, uh, you can see the difference really in the, the proton packs is there are, there's a little red circle and the red circle uh, is in a different spot for each Ghostbuster. So um, <laughs> take take note when you take them out of the box and make sure that you got the right one on the right Ghostbuster. So on to Ernie Hudson, Winston Zedmore. So Winston arguably comes with the best uh, accessory. Uh, once again, rinse and repeat on the, uh, the actual Ghostbuster body. Uh, this one, again, nailed Ernie Hudson. This might, I don't know whether him or Egon is my favorite one, but the, the likeness on, on Winston here is fantastic. Um, Winston comes with his proton pack, as, as we, we showed with the others. So what's interesting about uh, Winston's uh, effect here is they, he is the only Ghostbuster that has the proton effect. And the proton effect does work on any of the proton blasters. And you can see uh, it fits right there on the end of Egon's. Um, really cool effect, hard plastic middle um, with a, a kind of soft rubberized um, outer. Uh, really, really cool effect. Damn shame that the rest of them don't come with it. How are you supposed to cross the streams if you only have one? Um, yeah, so that's my, my only real problem with that. Uh, but Winston is a great figure. And then lastly, we have Peter Vankman, Bill Murray himself. Um, again, the likeness is good. Like, it's obvious who this is, who this is supposed to be. Um, the thing that's that's a nice little added touch to, to Vankman's figure is that his his pants, unlike the other Ghostbusters, are not tucked into his boots. Um, nice, nice little touch there. Uh, otherwise, you know, rinse and repeat again for his, the, his costume, the attention to detail, uh, the, it's great. Um, these figures and, you know, we'll, we'll go over the, the, uh, articulation using Peter here. Um, all of them have a double jointed elbow. Um, they have, uh, the ability to rotate at the wrist. They have the bicep swivel as well as the, uh, the slight butterfly jointed, um, uh, shoulder there on the ball. They rotate at the waist. They um, they crunch back. They crunch a little bit forward. Um, the belt is a separate piece, but it does not come off of the Ghostbusters. It's just kind of in there. Um, they have a, a little pipe that's uh, a little hose that's connected from the back to the, the pants. Um, they do have a double jointed knee. Um, 
which is really effective even with the bulkiness of their pants. So, you know, posability should not be a problem there. They have the ability to rotate at the thigh and, or swivel at the thigh. And thankfully that, that hose that's connected is above the swivel. So um, it doesn't get in the way at all. Um, and again, with uh, Peter's uh, accessory, he gets his proton pack and his unique accessory is the ghost trap which is really cool. There's nowhere for him to really hang it on his belt, though you can um, kind of tuck it in uh, and, and hang it, you know, kind of on one of the hoses. Um, it, it does work. You can also tuck it underneath, uh, you know, kind of like that and have it hanging off the side. So there there is a way for him to to have it on him without being him holding it. So overall, this is a solid wave of figures. If you're a fan of the Ghostbusters film and you have never purchased Ghostbusters figures before, or maybe you had the real Ghostbusters figure, figures from, from Kenner back in the day, this is a great wave to get into it. And me, that's where I'm at personally. So I've never owned Ghostbusters figures. I, I remember the real Ghostbusters from when I was a kid. I played with Dave's. Um, but I'd not have my own. So it is nice to finally have the core Ghostbusters, Dana, a villain, and, and, a, and a terror dog to put in my collection, in my, my little movie shelf. I'm very excited um, to have them. So uh, they're definitely across the board. It's a thumbs up, double thumbs up of a wave from Hasbro. Um, thank you for watching this super long video. Um, <laughs> I should have broken this up into multiple pieces, but here we are with one video. So stick around at the end, uh, we'll get these in the light box and, and take some pictures of them like usual. But uh, while you're here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down, oh, this is tough this way. Yeah, it's somewhere, down here maybe? Yeah, I think it's down, gonna be down here. Hit that subscribe button. Um, make sure that you're subscribing to the podcast uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, we're live every other Monday. And of course, follow us on social media at AIC underscore podcast, uh, where we're constantly posting toy news, pictures, and all kinds of things. And, uh, toy photographers out there, we've noticed you've been tagging us in your photos and we love it. We'll share them, uh, tag us in your super cool photos and, uh, and we'll get them out there for everyone to see, uh, as, as best as we can. Um, and with that, until next time, these were the Hasbro Plasma Series Ghostbusters. They're widely available everywhere. Um, go get them if you're into Ghostbusters or if you just really want some cool figures. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.